this is where we get interesting with another one of those main themes. Dante's Inferno. A lot of people, like I said earlier, they're not really fully aware of Dante's Inferno. Even though it's been put out there in different ways, a lot of different movies, cartoon shows highlighted it. And, you know, it's been talked about, but the book has been written, rewritten, and all over. It's pushed around in colleges, everywhere. We already know that it exists. But the concepts, a lot of people don't really actually read. So purgatory is what this is really all about. And it's basically the different stages and levels that you got to go through before you get into actual hell. So purgatory, Dante's Inferno, basically is written about this stage. It's between earth and hell. So it's different stages and you're seeing different people who are trapped or like in, in between here. And they're all basically these demons. So keep this in mind. They're not necessarily, they haven't reached hell yet, but they're like demon spawns that are just around there, trapped and in this, they're possessed. It's a real deep concept, but it's gonna be really highlighted throughout this episode. As you can see with the pictures, you can look at Dante's Inferno, these pictures from the beginning all the way around, you can see the, the, the different, it's like, um, when you think of like, um, the worst, the worst things that you can think of, that's what this is about. The worst died, like if you look at all the old school pictures of Dante's Infernos, different images that people had of the different scenes and the stuff that was spoke about to the stuff now that's modern with the X-Men right here, same type of things going on. But this was a powerful scene right here, getting back into the actual show. Right here, they having a major fight with the demons. Now, right from the beginning, they all falling and they jumping off, they, 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 they you know, they going through their motions back and forth. Um, the best things that happen is when Cyclops and Bishop, they use their powers together and it was phenomenal how that whole thing happened. Long story short, like Bishop is first, he's shooting his guns and he's like, all right, yo, Cyclops, hit me. So when he said that, like, okay, this is fire. He blast his eye, Cyclops give him a big blast of his eye blast and as he blasts, um, as he blasts Bishop with the um, um, eye blast, he or he's blasting him. Bishop is just absorb absorbing all of that energy, and once he finishes, he maxes out. He just lets loose, and he's like, "Yo, this is an exorcist." Like I said, this is like the hell. So we got the whole concepts of religion, spirit, spirituality, Christianity. So exorcism, it's you know, it's all ties in with this Dante's Inferno concept. So that's what Bishop is doing and he wipes out a whole load and he kind of clears a way for the X-Men to like have some breathing, sp breathing space. But as soon as he does this, that's when Clone Gene, they realize Clone Gene, cause they're like, yo, we everybody said that Mr. Sinister is in involved with all this, but how can Mr. Sinister know all of our deepest, darkest secrets? How can he have this power and be that, have this much control and he's not even around? Then they realize, oh no, Gene is right here. It's this evil Gene. And this evil Gene now comes down and, yo, she just destroys them. Basically, first, they're confused. And we see Cyclops is like, yo, what? hold up. How can you be doing this to us? And right when she's about to blast them, let them know, listen, I'm the Goblin Queen. I'm here. That's my name. She's like the savior or the protector of she's like the main like i said dante's inferno the purgatory there's a bunch of demons she's basically the queen leader of the goblin demons goblin queen so that's who this new clone gene is clone gene for mr sinister now transformed to goblin queen but right as she arrives or um, i mean right when she's there or she leaves basically because the real gene from her hospital or the i mean you know what her hospital gown on the gown on and she's in the resting and healing. She comes out and protects them, saves them at the last minute, right when the spawns, the demon spawns, is about to wild up on them again. So Jean basically pushes her away, and Goblin Queen is like, "Listen, I knew you was gonna come save them, but I don't understand how Cyclops is still interested in you. Seems like the clone Jean or Goblin Queen still loves Cyclops. There's something there. It's interesting right from the beginning." But basically, Goblin Queen is like, yo, I'm out of here. I'm going back to my real home with Sinister. And if y'all want it, if y'all want me, come get me. Y'all know where I'm at. And she just leaves. So that was big because now, 
Magneto and Rogue enter at the last minute. And they're like, hey, what's going on? What did we miss? Crazy thing is, Gambit kind of shows that he maybe have some proof and truth to what he was saying. Gambit is beat up and hurt from that battle with the um with the um demons and Goblin Queen. Rogue immediately runs over to Gambit and like, oh sugar, what's going on? I'm so sorry to see you like this. And he's trying to um, she's trying to help him out. Magneto just ignores it and like, yo, what's going on? This is when Mo 